Is the GD launcher the best modded Minecraft launcher there is? That is the question we are going to be asking today. My name is Watchana and I do everything modded Minecraft. You're going to want to go to gdlauncher.com. I will put a link down below for that one. And then you're going to click download. And then you can click download for Windows. And then if you go down, you can donate, etc. I'm going to assume that you know how to download and install a program. You install it just like you install any other program. Once that is now done, run the setup, install it, etc. And we're into the app. And the app itself is very, very simple. It looks like this. And I've already pre-installed RL Craft on here, called it RL Forever. And um, that is one of the mod packs, the only mod pack I have installed on this launcher. Now, I'm going to be showing you to start with how to install mod packs. Then we're going to go through the launcher options and the mod pack options themselves. So, first of all, down here on the right hand side, you can see I have logged into my Watchana account and you can add more Microsoft and Mojang accounts down there. On the bottom left, right here on next to my shoulder, you can see a little plus. If we click that plus, it's going to come up with adding a new instance. Now we can choose between vanilla, Curse Forge, or Feed the Beast, or importing a zip. Now, in all of my other launcher tutorials, I show you how to export the zips. We're going to do the exact same in here. So let's say we want to do vanilla. You can select a version. If you want just plain old vanilla, the releases, the snapshots, alpha, etc. Or if you want to put Forge or Fabric on there. This could be for if you want to, one, play vanilla, or if you actually want to install Forge and then install all of your own mods yourself. Otherwise, you can click Curse Forge and search by version and category, etc. The exact same way you can on the Curse Forge app. And then we can see here all the mods 8, for example, which, by the way, is actually a server I run. I run the Warch Club, and it's a 12 mod pack uh, public servers. You can join all of our servers. They're all public, free to join. Um, just click my Discord link below. There's 2,000 of us in there now. It's super active and friendly community. And if you need any help with any of what we discussed in this video, any of your own server help, any Java help, any Minecraft help, literally anything at all. Like we are happy enough to help you with anything. No issue is too small or too big and there's no silly questions. Um, so yeah, click that Discord link down below and join our community now. And um, you can see here, this is all of the different packs you can do. You can just click right here to download the latest version, or you can go explore versions. I mean, you click that, you're actually going to get a uh, scroll down description of the pack, and then you can also select a version here, and you can see if it's a stable version, the name of the version, and when it was released. You can then obviously press the download button if you want to install that pack. Now, we can do the exact same with Feed the Beast. We can also search, and we can import from a zip, and you put the link here. Now that we've installed a mod pack, for example, RL Craft right here, I can either left click and play it, or I can right click and manage it. So I'm gonna go to manage, and up here you can see the Minecraft version it's on. So we can see it's on 1.12.2, it's running Forge, the mod loader version. We can see um, how much I've played it, which is zero. RL Craft is another server we do, by the way. Um, how many mods are installed? Now you can rename it just like I have. You can see when you last played it, and the mod pack version. Now you can override the game resolution by clicking this, and then you can put in whatever resolution you want. Um, you can also override the Java memory, and I will show you how to set a default Java memory allocation for all of your mod packs. When you do it in here, this is specifically choosing for the individual mod packs. This is going to change it just for RL Craft, and I've got it on four um, four gigabytes. I would recommend about eight gig if you only have eight gig on your computer give it six or if you really can't four four would be the absolute bare minimum but generally eight is enough some people go on about like giving it oh i'm giving it loads and loads of ram you don't need to do that trust me it's all within what you're doing your java arguments if you need more help with that again just join my discord and i'll help you out to really um what's that word optimize your game um, you can also override the Java arguments. You're going to do that in here. And again, I would just leave this alone unless you really know what you're doing um, or I can help you with it. And then you can also set a custom Java path here. So you're probably not really going to want to do much with that unless you know what you're doing, um, apart from this one here with overriding the Java memory. Then we can go down into mods. And in this one, you can check for updates. You can select them all. You can select individual ones. You can add a mod. And if you click that, 
it's literally going to show you which ones you already have installed. And then you can say, do you know what? I want just enough resources. I'm going to download that. And now it's in here. If we click the spanner, you can actually see about the mod and what version you have installed, just like you can with mod packs. You can also search up here and look in categories of mods, etc. So then what you can also do is turn mods on or off and delete them from your instance of this mod pack. Then we can go down to mod pack itself and we can change the version. You can see here if I want a beta version or a stable version, etc. Add any notes that you may want. Add any resource packs and it's the same as adding mods. And then this is where all your screenshots are going to be in this one here. So that is looking over everything in the actual instance itself. Then we're going to go up to the top right here to the little spanner. And this is going to be your overall GD launcher um, settings. And you can see here my username and my UUID. Everybody has a UUID. You can find it on Google or actually it shows you here, which is really helpful. And you can say, do you want um, the stable or beta versions of the um, launcher? Uh, concurrent downloads, how many you want to have going at once and set a maximum for that. Do you want to set, um, do you want to sort your instances, your mod packs by alphabetical, last played or most played? I think, well, do whatever you want, really. <laughs> I always put mine by last played per personally. Um, I just love how simple the GD launcher does it compared to like the Curse Forge launcher or the Prism launcher, etc. Multi Minecraft launcher, which are a bit more in depth. The GD launcher is a lot more simplified if you just want to, like, you know, just get going into the mod packs. And then you've got your preferred release channel here for Curse as well. Discord integration, if you want to um, show what you're doing. Um, Minecraft news, hiding the launcher while you're playing the game. If you want to put it on potato PC mode. And if you want to clear shared data and where you're going to actually install it for. And then as well down here, you can see what version you're on. If you want to be super kind and donate to the developers, you can buy them a coffee here with Kofi. And then we've got the Java tab here and it can auto detect your Java path. If this is um, if you're having any problems with auto detecting the Java path, join my discord and I can help you out with that. It should be fine, though, but sometimes we do have a few issues with that. The general game resolution. This is the defaults, remember, for all your mod packs. So if you want to set, for example, your Java memory to 8 gig on every single mod pack and just leave it there for all of them, do it in this option here rather than doing it in each individual instance. And then you've got your Java custom arguments. Again, it's going to do it for all of your mod packs. Now, depending what Java version you're on, if you're on later versions like Minecraft 1.18, you will be using Java 17 or above, which means that you may have different Java arguments if you're using a uh, 1.12 pack so do be careful putting in default java arguments there and if you know what you're doing because you could end up messing something up horrifically um and then your minecraft startup method um sim link or default i actually don't know what that is i've actually never heard of that before if anyone knows leave a comment below i love to you guys to educate me just as i educate you um and then that is all the options for there as i said the gd launcher is super simple you can, if you don't want to be super simple, click this little button up here at the top, and this is going to open the developer tools. Now, I'm going to assume that if you're watching this tutorial, you don't need the developer tools, um, but it is there if you need it. That is literally it for the GD Launcher tutorial. As I said, it is so simple. If you have any questions at all, click um, the comment box down below. Please don't forget to subscribe. And next week, I'm going to be going over the final launcher, for my launcher tutorial series, which is my goal to educate you all on all of them so you can make a well-informed choice, is the AT launcher, and that is going to be the last one. So make sure to click subscribe for that. And again, if you do want to join our amazing community with 12 public mod packs and play with other players, then uh, if you're new or experienced at Modcraft, Modcraft? Modded Minecraft, then just click that Discord link below. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it was really helpful, and I will see you in next week's video.